Conor, first and foremost, let's get it out of the way. Obviously, there's been an awful lot of distractions in the build-up to this one. What's the mood like amongst the team? Uh, not the mood. Us being ready to play. It's something where we've looked at it and a lot of people have spoken. We've read a lot of things and seen a lot of things. But listen, we, we're professional footballers. We've got to prepare to, to get ready to play a game, which is a really, really important game for the football club now. Like I said, people have had a lot to say and we've read a lot of things in the press and whether it's right or wrong, we don't really know, but we're professionals, we're, we're ready to go and compete as much as we can. Do you as players read things and, and see things on the social media? Because you've all got families, so I imagine mm -hmm. there are concerns beyond football in this. Well, that's the thing, <laughs> that's the thing really, obviously, you go home to your wives and your kids after the game and the day after we, we fly home, so that's the priority, that's the thing that we need to make sure we make sure it's right when we're going home and we're doing things right when we go home. But yeah, we read everything. We see everything. We, we see what's going on. We obviously see the game postponed tonight with obviously Manchester City and Arsenal. So you look at things, but as players, there's not much we can do. All we can do is train and prepare and make sure we listen to our managers and make sure we're right tomorrow night. Is there an element then that the club put out their statement, they've had their say, so now your focus is just on doing what you need to do? Well, that's it. We, we've been thinking about it the last couple of days, about what's going to happen and how it's going to go and how it's actually going to pan out. But the statement went out last night. We know the club have been doing things behind the scenes and trying to sort something out. And it was something where, like I said, we, we make sure we prepare right and train right to, to compete in what is an actual fantastic game for the football club, which I think everybody's forgetting. So we're ready and we'll go there to, to try and do well. Yeah, because from a player's point of view, this is last 16 of the Europa League. This is unbelievable from where you've come from. It's amazing. It's amazing. I, th I think people are, are forgetting that in terms of it's it's a huge competition, it's a huge game, but but one that's obviously had a lot of things surrounding it now. Like I said, we, we've seen everything, but we're prepared, right? We're, we're professionals in terms of what we do and how we want to prepare to, to make sure we go there and compete. Because, I mean, I was there five years ago when you made your Wolves debut. <laughs> We'd only been out of League One for a season at that point. Yeah. To think then that you would be leading out this football club <clears throat> at this stage of a European competition is dreamland. And it is, and it's something you dream about all the time. It really is. It's something where we've looked at it all season, and as the games have come thick and fast, you've got more and more excited. I think the disappointing thing, if there is a disappointing thing about this one, is there's no support in the ground. I think it's something where what's football without supporters it's it's nothing football's nothing without supporters it's that's what makes everything in terms of being supports in the ground that's what we play for that's what we play to do to entertain supporters and make sure that they're right so that's the biggest disappointment but at the same time it's something that this club's worked for for the whole season so it's something we're looking forward to in terms of the tie but when you look at it without our fans who who were part of this with us it's that's a disappointing thing about it. You mentioned the games come so thick and fast mm. have you actually had a time to to sit back and reflect on just what you've achieved this year? Not really, not really. It's not something we've, we've thought about. I think that'll come at the end of the season in terms of look at where we go and how we finish and what we actually do this season. But in terms of looking back on what we've done up to now, we've not had time to do it because you know, probably you finished the, the group stage, which we actually finished with an amazing result against Besiktas, which is 4-0 at Molyneux, and then all of a sudden you go again against Espanyol, which is another fantastic result, then you go again the week after, and then two weeks later you're going again. So you don't really think about it. It's something where we've got to take it in our stride. We've got... A lot of players who, who have played in the competition before and know the competition inside out, so we're trying to learn off them as well. But I think it's something where we'll reflect come the end of the season, but hopefully after a good season. Is that actually quite a good um, reflection on, on what you are like as a team and what makes you a good group? Because you don't do that. There is a time to reflect and you'll do it when there's a good time to do it. In the meantime, you focus on what you need to get done. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think if you start looking on what you've done this season, you get stuck in it. You get stuck in, like I mentioned, the Basic Task game, the Espanyol tie, where we've actually come through and, and done really well. You get stuck in it, so it's important we focus on the present, which is against a huge football club now and one that we're relishing as much as we possibly can. Like I said, we're prepared from the Brighton game. We need to improve from when, when we played Brighton on the weekend, but we've worked on a few few things this week to make sure we're ready come, come tomorrow night. They've obviously faced Arsenal, knocked them out. They had a decent result at home against Spurs in the Champions League. Mm. So they may well feel like they know a little bit more about you than you probably know about them. Yeah, but we spoke to Danielle. Danielle knows quite a bit about them as well. So he's told us quite a bit, which is good. And he's obviously had a good career there and speaks very, very highly of, of Olympiacos and the people involved with them as well. So we spoke to them. We, we've watched them games. We've looked at them games in terms of how we can try and take advantage of what they do and how they play. And it's important that we go there with our own mentality and our own way of playing because 
that's what we do every single game. That will never ever change with this club and never ever change with what we do. So it's important we take that in our stride and, and move forward as quick as possible. And just finally, you've mentioned the fact that there won't be any Wolves fans there. Mm. I know that they've travelled in huge numbers wherever you've wanted them to go, even the 50-odd that went to Yerevan yeah. in the qualification period. But as a message to those who would have loved to have been there but can't, what would you say to all those who will be watching? How much it means to us, about what they, what they give to us and what they do, but more importantly that they're safe. That's the most important thing. That We all know that this virus and whatever's going around is scaring people at the minute, we get it, but the most important thing is that people are safe. That's the only thing. So... We cherish and it means the most to us the way they, they uh, support us and what they do and the way they travel and obviously a lot of book, book to, to come to Greece as well to travel and support us here so it means a lot to us but the most important thing is that they're safe so that's all that matters.